Ok. De acuerdo, creo que ahora sí. Hola, guys, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Buenas noches. Buenas noches, coach. ¿Cómo estamos? Good evening, Antonio. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm great. fine. Thank I'm you. fine. Awesome. I'm fine. Awesome. Thank you. Happy to see you again, Antonio. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you, too. ¿Qué tal, guys? ¿Cómo han estado las vacaciones? A ver, cuéntenme. Perdón por el retraso. Tenía un poco de problemas aquí con la conexión. Pero ya estamos otra vez. Permítame un instante, guys, que todavía tengo problemas. No sé qué es lo que pasa. Give me just a second, guys. ¿Qué pasó? Coach, está en mute. Oh, perdón, guys. Perdón. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what is going on. Maybe I'm still on vacation. That that could be what is going on. Probably I'm still thinking that I'm on vacation. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, guys. Uh, well, I, just, I was just trying to say that, well, I'm happy to see you again. I hope you guys had a great time during your vacation. Hopefully you guys were able to enjoy and spend time with your family, the people that you care about. So this is going to be the last week for us. We only have four more classes, okay? So we only have until Thursday, 13. And then we finish. So just few, just four more days, guys, just four more classes. And then we are done. So, ya casi, ya casi terminamos. Solamente nos faltan cuatro clases más hasta el jueves, ¿verdad? Entonces, esta semana nosotros vamos a completar vamos a completar la sección 5 y también vamos a hacer la parte del examen final, ¿verdad? Eso sería lo que tenemos que hacer para esta semana. Esa sería nuestra meta. Así que, ok, guys, give me just a second. I'm just uh, trying to make some time uh, so we can wait for the other guys. You can see that we are only eight participants. We should be like 14 or 15. So we, I'm just trying to wait so they can join the class. Okay, guys. Vamos a ver, ya van ingresando más. Ya tenemos a Gerson. Buenas noches, Gerson. Buenas noches, teacher. Thank you for coming, Gerson. How are you doing? Uh, I'm fine, teacher. Awesome. Happy to see you, Gerson. Thank you for coming. Bueno, vamos a ver, eh, ya está también por acá, vamos a ver, Nefer, Gabriela, Stephanie, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están, guys? ¿Qué tal las vacaciones? Hilbert. No sé si tuvieron vacaciones del trabajo. A ver, cuéntenme, ¿cómo, cómo fue para ustedes? Did you guys have vacations or not? Did you have to work? Did you get at least maybe two days or one day or nothing? Did you have to go to work? In my case, guys, I had to work every day. So, but I'm happy. I'm happy to be back with you. Vamos a ver, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está, Gilbert? Buenas noches. Buenas noches, teacher. I have three days vacation. You had, you had three days off. Okay. Three days off. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, Gilbert. And what did you do on the, on the weekend? Did you maybe go out or 
did you went did you go to the beach or something like that did you do something exciting maybe uh, i was in my house oh, okay so you stayed at home i see okay muy bien Gilbert, just stay at home. That's fine. I mean, sometimes we just have to stay at home and just relax and do nothing, okay? That's fine, guys. Especially, I mean, sometimes uh, there is a lot of things going on. Uh, there is a lot of traffic on the street. So sometimes it's just better to stay at home. So that's fine. Okay. Sí, así que muy bien, muy bien este. Gracias, Hilbert. Creo que en mi caso igual, pues, o sea, creo que para las vacaciones a veces es complicado, ¿verdad? Toda la gente está, todos los lugares están llenos, a veces las cosas son más costosas. Así que a veces es mejor quedarse en la casa, guys. Es mejor, más seguro, más económico. Y así, ¿verdad? Es bueno salir, aunque sea un ratito. Eh, por mi parte, a veces salgo un par de horas con mi esposa. Y así, pero poquito nada más. Good evening, Freddy. Thank you for coming. How are you doing? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everyone. You're welcome. I'm here already. Very good. Happy to see you again, yes. Freddy. Did nice you, to see you too. How was your vacation, Freddy? Did you do something exciting? Did you go out somewhere? What did you do on vacation? Mm -hmm. I didn't have vacations I see. instead. Yes, but it was okay because I was I was working too hard, right? I right. see. And I see. it's okay. Very good. Well, thank you, thank you, uh, Freddy, for sharing with the class. So well yeah, done. I can I can imagine that a lot of you had to work, which is, I mean, there is uh, there are some. There is a good part to that because you make more money, right? I mean, if you have to work on vacation, then uh, you get more money. They basically have to pay a double for that time that you yes. that you work. So that's that's good. That is something good. So, what do you guys think about that? Do you like to work on vacation, or do you prefer uh, just to have the days off? What do you like? What what do you guys prefer? Do you prefer to work or do you prefer to have uh, the day off, like to have vacation, for example? ¿Qué piensan, guys? Vamos a ver. Prefieren, my, digamos... Ajá, vamos a ver, Freddy. In my case, teacher, if I could, if I could have half and half working and half uh, in vacation because it's a little bit tired working in, in Holy Week. Very good. Any... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, very good. Thank you, Freddy. So yeah, I think that that's a good option too because you can have like some, I mean, you can work, you can have, you can make some money, but then you can also have some time to relax, just to relax, okay? So that's good. Yeah, I, I think that probably I would prefer the same thing. Maybe to work one day and then just to have the day off, for example. So that, that's a good option. Vamos a ver, ¿qué hay del resto? ¿Qué dice, por ejemplo, Sullivan? Sullivan le gusta trabajar, creo yo. Good night, everyone. Good evening, Sullivan. Good evening. Yeah, I, I don't have to work on vacation because I have a lot of time accumulate because I work a lot. So I take the time to have my time with my family. Okay. So I have my, my space in vacation. Very so good. I enjoyed that week. Awesome. Did you do something uh, on vacation, Sullivan? Did you go <laughs> somewhere, like maybe to the beach or something like that? No, no, I don't know. I am not agree go to the beach because it's too... Uh, too crowded. Uh, it's crowded. I, I don't like that. So I, I have to be in my house fixing some stuff and doing my my things i mean i have a, a lot of work to do in my house so i stay in my house just with my family okay awesome okay very good thank you sullivan so basically sullivan yes, just stay at home and because he said that 
I mean, he worked really hard before the, you know, the vacation time, before the holidays. So he didn't have to work on holidays. So that's good. I mean, that's that's awesome that you have the opportunity to do that, right? Because, uh, that, I mean, not everybody can do that. But that's that's really cool. Very good. Okay, so Sullivan said that he didn't go to the beach because it's too crowded. Okay, so I don't I don't know guys, but um I'm I think almost the same, just like Sullivan. I don't like to go to crowded places. Do you like crowded places, guys? Like for example, uh, the beach or maybe like the market. Do do you like that kind of places where there are a lot of people? No, teacher, I don't like crowded places. You don't like crowded places, okay? No, teacher. Yeah, I think that it's better just to go somewhere, uh, just to relax. Personally, I just prefer to go like maybe to the mountain, something like that, than go to the beach. That's for me. I don't I don't like to go to the beach that much because I don't like the the sun. I don't like I don't like those things. I get like too many sunburns too, so I don't like it. Bueno, guys, este, gracias por venir. Es, perdón ahí por tanto estarles preguntando cosas, ¿verdad? Solamente es para que podamos otra vez, eh, bueno, saber qué es lo que hemos estado haciendo en estos días. Qué bueno por los que pudieron descansar y por los que trabajaron, pues también, como les digo, está la parte buena que van a recibir más dinero, ¿verdad? Por su trabajo, así que por un lado tiene sus ventajas también. Porque, bueno, estar libre, guys, eh, al menos no sé si para ustedes sea lo mismo, pero yo si tengo tiempo a veces me pongo a pensar en gastar en muchas cosas. Es como que, ah, quiero aquí esto, quiero por allá quizás una torta o algo así. Entonces ahí me pongo a gastar y cosas que no convienen también, ¿verdad? Este, ahorita que quiero hacer dieta, creo que no, no me conviene pensar en eso. Así que esas cosas pasan. Así que es mejor estar ocupado, estar trabajando, ahí es mejor. Algunas veces, ¿verdad? Bueno, este, antes de las vacaciones, guys, nos quedamos en la sección 4, ¿verdad? Y nosotros, pues, ¿qué hemos visto hasta ahora? Nosotros, bueno, déjenme ver por acá. Uh, veamos. Uh, acabo en una semana. Ok, ahí está. Esta sería. Uh -huh. Sí, creo que este sería. Permítame, guys, que aquí estoy revisando todavía. Ajá. Bueno, durante este módulo nosotros hemos revisado varias cosas, ¿verdad? Hemos revisado, eh, por ejemplo, eh, de lo último que estuvimos viendo fue los sequence adverbs. También vimos el presente perfecto. Eh, hemos hecho comparaciones de casas y apartamentos, también evaluaciones con adjetivos y con nombres. Entonces, es solamente como para refrescar, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que hemos estado haciendo hasta ahora. En lo último que nos quedamos fue en esa parte de los adverbios de secuencia, que era como que decíamos nosotros, por ejemplo, like first I uh, first you toast the, the bread and then uh, you add the, the mixture. After that, uh, you hit the the pan for example and then uh things like that right so we were talking about the the sequence adverse and you guys also you guys had a homework and you described like your favorite recipe like for example uh, how to make a pizza how to make a sandwich how to make um, scrambled eggs things like that right so you guys explain that to me Okay, uh, do you guys remember that? Eso fue lo último que vimos, ¿verdad? Como eh, los adverbios de secuencia y toda esa parte. Dijimos de que solamente, eh, no solamente se podía utilizar para comida, sino que también para otras cosas, procesos, ¿verdad? Como una secuencia. Y pues eh, los animaba también a ustedes que lo utilizaran para, que utilizaran todos los adverbios de secuencia que tenemos. No solamente decir como, and then, and then, and then, and then. Uh, so we don't sound like too rep repetitive, okay? We can say like first, then, after, 
uh, after that, next, and at the end we say finally, okay? So those are the only, like, first and finally are the only two that cannot be uh, changed, okay? First goes at the beginning, and then finally it goes at the end. Then uh, the other sequence adverbs that we have, we can change them, okay? They can change their position. So that's that was the only thing that we were saying the last time. Bueno, entonces ahora, guys, nosotros vamos a empezar con una nueva sección, como les estaba diciendo. Al principio, para los que no habían entrado todavía, vamos a empezar con la sección de, eh, vamos a hablar acerca del futuro, ¿ok? Así que eso es lo que vamos a estar haciendo para esta sección. La sección 5 y por último nos queda la parte de el examen final. Solamente eso, ¿verdad? Tenemos cuatro clases más, así que ya casi terminamos. Y la última clase sería el jueves 13, si todo sale bien. Si no tenemos un inconveniente, ¿verdad? Entonces, para esa fecha, ustedes ya tienen que haber terminado eh, prácticamente todo. ¿Ok? So, vamos a ver. Vamos a ver por acá. Déjenme presentar, déjenme compartirles algo por acá. Vamos a verle para abajo. Examples. Ok, so there we go. Ok, guys. Bueno, vamos a hablar acerca del futuro. Aquí les voy a compartir esto. Esta presentación. Eh, por acá está como el objetivo, ¿verdad? Bueno, son los objetivos, más bien. Entonces, nuestra agenda va a ser esa. Primero, vamos a hablar acerca de el futuro. ¿Qué es lo que... ¿Cómo nosotros hablamos del futuro en inglés? ¿Cuándo nosotros vamos a utilizar una estructura con respecto a un tema y cuándo vamos a utilizar otra? Porque hay varias formas de hacerlo. Y nosotros vamos a aprender a ser bastante específicos, ¿ok? Porque, ¿qué sucede? En el inglés... Eh, Quizás la gente es un poco más eh, precisa para decir las cosas de lo que lo somos nosotros. ¿Okay? Porque nosotros en el español pues decimos, por ejemplo, eh, yo voy a hacer esto, yo haré esto. Eh, cualquiera de esas expresiones casi que significa lo mismo. Pero en el inglés no es lo mismo. Eh, en el inglés prácticamente si utilizamos una estructura implica una cosa y si, y si utilizamos otra ya implica otra. ¿okay? Entonces... Eh, para que nosotros podamos expresarnos de la mejor forma, que la gente nos entienda lo que queremos decir, vamos a ver eh, las opciones que tenemos. ¿okay? Entonces, primero tenemos los objetivos. So, the first one that we have right here, guys, it says the future tense is what we use to discuss our plans and hopes. ¿Okay? In this lesson, we learn how to use going to and will to convert a statement to the future tense. Okay, so we are going to learn how to use going to and will. So we can talk about something in the future. Okay, and then uh, we also are going to learn how to ask and answer questions using going to and will as auxiliary verbs. And we are going to practice, okay? We need to practice, guys. That's something really important, like I always told you. We are going to practice. That's a really important part for me. And I think that you guys are doing a great job at this moment. So in practice, discussing your future plans, for example, an upcoming vacation, holidays with family, or even your plans for later in the day. Okay. Bueno, entonces vamos a hablar acerca de planes en el futuro. Por ejemplo, una, vac una vacación próxima, holidays, que son las festividades, okay, con la familia o incluso sus planes para más tarde en el día. ¿Ok? Se puede hablar a corto plazo, se puede hablar a largo plazo, tenemos todas esas opciones. Eh, vale, entonces vamos a empezar, guys, hablando acerca del futuro con el verbo auxiliar will. Will es como los verbos que hemos estado viendo anteriormente, como have, eh, también can, would, should, son verbos auxiliares. ¿Ok? ¿Qué es lo que significa? Que nosotros no solamente vamos a utilizar este verbo, sino que vamos a ponerle otro, para darle sentido a la oración, ¿ok? Este solamente sirve para eh, expresar un modo del verbo. Entonces tenemos acá eh, como una especie de definición, ¿verdad? Dice, so we use the future with will to talk about an event in the future that you have just decided to do. 
for predictions and for promises. Okay, so there is something really important, guys. When you use will, basically it implies that you are talking about something that you just decided, okay? Like right now. Or so you can make predictions, uh, something that you are not sure that is going to happen, and then for promises. So those are like the three situations when we are going to use will. Okay, vaya, entonces nosotros, guys, vamos a utilizar will cuando hablemos prácticamente de tres cosas. Cosas que acabamos de decidir para predicciones y por último para promesas, ¿ok? Entonces, por ejemplo, digamos que yo digo, eh, bueno, eh, mi hermano es muy inteligente, él, él será eh, un gran profesional, ¿ok? Prácticamente yo puedo hacer esa predicción. Yo no sé si va a ser así en realidad, porque muchas cosas pueden pasar, ¿ok? Entonces, es como una predicción más. No estoy al 100% seguro. Lo digo porque yo creo que así va a ser. Pero no estoy seguro. Entonces, esa sería una predicción. Otro es, por ejemplo, eh, digamos que yo acabo de enterarme de algo y por esa razón yo decido que voy a hacer algo en el futuro debido a eso. Entonces, yo no lo tenía planeado con anticipación. Me acabo de dar cuenta de algo y entonces, en base a eso, yo decido hacerlo. ¿Ok? Like, for example, if you, uh, let's say that you are trying to decide where you, what you are going to eat, for example, then uh, probably that's something that you didn't plan before, the time that you are speaking. So then you can just decide at the moment. Okay, you can say like, okay, I think I will have some uh, hamburger with some fried uh, potatoes, for example. You can say that. Entonces, eh, bueno, ahí estarían como unos ejemplos, guys. Ya vamos a ver más en profundidad para que no, para que nos quede más claro. Y vamos a practicar también, ¿ok? Entonces dice acá abajo, decision made at the moment of speaking. For example, like at a restaurant, plans made quickly after learned some information from someone. Like, like, like I mentioned before, like, for example, you, you can say, I'll have baked chicken, ¿ok? Este es un ejemplo que tenemos acá. Está contractado, guys. La contracción de I will se hace de esta forma. Colocamos la letra I, luego el apóstrofe, L, L, ¿ok? And you can pronounce that something like I'll, ¿ok? You need to add like an L sound at the end. Like I'll have baked chicken, for example. So that would be an example, guys. Bueno, eh, vamos a ver. Vamos a dar un poquito más de información acerca de esto para que podamos eh, participar, guys, ¿ok? Solamente quiero que vean un poco más de la estructura. Ahorita la vamos a ver. Y luego vamos a hacer unas oraciones juntos, ¿ok? Déjenme por acá. Vamos a ver. Vamos a cambiar de pantalla. Ahí está. Entonces, acá tenemos este video que es acerca de el futuro. Nosotros vamos a utilizar dos estructuras para, para hablar del futuro. Vamos a utilizar be going to, ¿ok? En vamos a utilizar también el verbo will, que es lo que estamos viendo ahorita. ¿Ok? Be going to is for something that, in this, in this case, something that we have planned before. And then will is for something that, you know, possible plans before you have made a decision. So there is a difference between the two of them, ¿ok? But both are used so you can talk about the future. Ahorita vamos a ver esto, guys. Vamos a ver primero will. Después vamos a ver cuál es la diferencia con be going to. ¿Ok? Ya vamos a ver. Entonces vamos a reproducir una parte del video y después la vamos a discutir. ¿Ok? Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to talk about future plans. You'll also learn how to use be going to and will as you're expressing your future plans. For example, I'm going to go to France for my next vacation. I'm not sure what place I'll visit yet, but I think I'll visit the Eiffel Tower. Before I explain the grammar involved in this lesson, I would like to play an audio program to illustrate how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully and take notes as I'll ask a few questions about this listening activity at the end. A 
I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you? Ok, guys, aquí en esta parte lo que hay es una conversación en la cual utilizan ambas cosas, ok? Utilizan will and be going to, ok? Creo que tal vez no la podemos saltar porque todavía no hemos visto la otra parte. Después la vamos a escuchar, ok? Nos vamos a saltar por ahorita esta parte porque eso nos va a servir para practicar. Day. Okay. Oh, let them know what time we're going to plans using going direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Now let me present this structure. What we want to do in this lesson is learn how to talk about future plans using going to and will. Now for the main part, both of those are quite similar when you express future plans or when you express things about the future. But what we're going to learn in this class is that we're going to use be going to whenever you talk about something that you've decided on. That's the key here. Something that you've decided on, we're going to use be going to. So let me give you a quick example about that. Let's Vamos. say press this idea. And so um, you're chatting with some friends. Uh, you want to take vacation, but you friends. Bye guys. Eh, me voy a saltar esta parte de be going to porque todavía no vamos por allí. Así que ya vamos a regresar ahí, okay? That's just a quick example there. Um, you're almost sure that that event will happen. On the other hand, let's say that you're gonna you want to take vacation, but you don't know yet. You haven't even asked your boss about it yet. And so um, you're chatting with some friends and they ask you, so what are you planning to do for your vacations? And maybe you respond, well, I'm not sure. I guess I'll go to Europe next month, but I don't know. I haven't bought the tickets. I haven't asked my boss whether I can go or not. And so in order to express that idea that you haven't decided on, then we're going to use these expressions. I guess I'll just um, stay home. Th these are the examples here in the book. But um, going back to our example about vacations, I guess I'll travel, but I'm not sure where. Uh, maybe I'll go somewhere in, in Europe. I probably will go somewhere in Europe. And that's, I mean, those are just my examples on, on how uh, you will use these expressions. But the idea here is that if you're thinking about something that you're not sure about whether that will happen or not, then you're going to use these expressions towards the right. And that's the difference that we're going to learn in this particular class. Uh, you will use these expressions. But the idea here is that if Vaya, guys. Entonces acá tenemos, como les mencionaba, las dos formas, ¿ok? Ambas son para el futuro. ¿Ok? So we have future would be going to and will. So right now we are trying to learn about, you know, how to use it, the, the future using will, ¿ok? So we have will plus the verb for possible plans. ¿Ok? So basically what he was saying is that we use will when we are not really sure if we are going to do it or not, okay? For example, if somebody asks you, what are you going to do? Then usually when you use will, you will use an expression like this, okay? You can say, I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay at home. Or maybe I'll watch a few DVDs. Maybe I'll, I'll watch a few movies. Or I don't know, I think I'll go camping, okay? I probably won't go anywhere. As you can see, guys, we have these expressions like I guess, maybe, I think, I probably won't go, okay? So as you can see, we have these expressions that basically imply that you are not really sure if you are going to do it or not, okay? Así que eh, tenemos estas expresiones, guys, como I guess, es como yo supongo, eh, tal vez, yo creo, probablemente. Entonces no estamos seguros, okay? Casi siempre va acompañado de esta forma el will, ¿ok? Porque implica como que nosotros no estamos al 100% seguros. Él decía, por ejemplo, que por, si queremos irnos de, de vacaciones, eh, puede que no le hayamos preguntado a nuestro jefe, que no tengamos permiso todavía, por ejemplo. Y nosotros podemos decir, uh, well, maybe I will go to France, or maybe 
I will stay at home because I don't know. I, I'm not sure yet, okay? So that is the reason why we use will instead of be going to, because we are not really sure if that is something that is going to happen, okay? But maybe also because we just decided to do that at the time that we are speaking. So that is the difference here. Okay, entonces, ¿cómo es que se utiliza? Digamos, ¿cuál es la estructura? Se la voy a mostrar por aquí. ¿Cómo es el going, el, la forma del will? Es bien fácil, la verdad. Es bien similar a lo que hemos estado viendo. Entonces, las oraciones afirmativas va a ser el sujeto, el verbo will, el verbo en la forma base y el complemento. Ok, guys. Así que vamos a ver. Eh, deme, por favor, algún verbo. Vamos a ver, algún verbo que se le venga a la mente. Vamos a hacerlo. Vamos a armemos, armemos unas oraciones juntos, ¿ok? Un sujeto que me puedan dar. Subject. Ajá, uh -huh, the subject. Say, for example, like Maria, you? they, you, ¿ok? You. You. Then we can say will. That's what goes next. Then we need the verb. ¿Qué podemos poner después de you will? Okay, va un verbo, dice acá. Un verbo en la forma base. Sleep. You will sleep. Okay. Let's say that you will sleep a lot today or tonight, for example. So that you can see, guys, it's really easy, right? We just have the subject. Then we have the, okay, we have go to. Stephanie. Thank you. So we can also say you will go will go to church, for example, on Sunday. I don't know. We can say something like that. So as you can see, it's really easy, right? We just need the subject, then the verb, then the base form of the verb. Okay, guys, it's not going to change. It's going to be the base, the base form. And then the complement. So like you will sleep a lot tonight. That's just something that I'm saying. I mean, I'm not really sure if that is going to happen. Let's say that, for example, somebody drinks a, a pill and then maybe they can get sleepy because of that. But I can't be really sure if that is going to happen or not, for example, okay? Así que, por ejemplo, pudiera decir, eh, vas a, dormirás bastante esta noche. Puede ser que yo lo diga como una suposición, no estoy seguro. Simplemente lo digo porque yo creo que es así. ¿okay? Entonces, ese es el sentido de Will, básicamente. No es que estamos tan seguros que va a pasar. El otro es, eh, tú irás a la iglesia el día domingo. Entonces, eh, puede ser que también yo simplemente lo esté, pre, esté haciendo una predicción acerca de eso, pero no estamos seguros tampoco, ¿ok? Entonces, ahí viene como la parte del will. Y así es. Eh, básicamente, esa es la estructura, guys. Es bien sencillo. Aquí hay otros ejemplos. So, I will play video games tonight. Let's say that I wasn't planning on doing that, but then something happened and then I'm going to do it because of that. Because something changed. Let's say that, for example, uh, let's say that I had the class and then the class is suspended because the coach is sick. Then I will play video games. Okay, I just decided that I'm going to do that. Okay, then we have the next example. It says the restaurant is closed, so I will cook dinner tonight. Okay. Estamos diciendo aquí que el restaurante está cerrado, así que cocinaré la, seña, la cena esta noche. Okay. Probablemente pensábamos ir a comer afuera, pero se cerró. Entonces, eh, bueno, en este momento, cambio de planes, decidí cocinar la cena. Ni modo, ¿verdad? Me tocó. Entonces, ahí está. Esa es la estructura para las oraciones afirmativas. Y como les decía antes, eh, si quieren hacer una contracción, simplemente vamos a agregar el apóstrofe y luego la letra LL. ¿Ok? So, you'll sleep a lot tonight. You'll go to church on Sunday. You'll go to church on Sunday, for example. 
Those are just examples, guys. We can say many other things. Vamos a ver. Entonces, después tenemos eh, la estructura para eh, oraciones negativas y preguntas. Ok, para oraciones negativas es bien similar a lo anterior. El sujeto más will. Ok, will es el mismo para todos los sujetos, guys. No importa si es tercera persona, si es eh, singular, plural, no importa nada de eso. Siempre va a ser igual. So, sujeto, el eh, verbo auxiliar will, y luego not. Ok, we can also make contractions like I want eat chicken or she won't go to the party, for example. So we have the subject plus the verb will plus the uh, word not plus the verb in the base form, okay? And the complement. Así que esta es la estructura para las oraciones negativas. Vamos a cambiar el color un poquito. Oh, por ahí quizás. Vamos a ver aquí. Bueno, luego tenemos las preguntas. Las preguntas igual, guys. Simplemente le cambiamos el orden. ¿Ok? Acá, esta es una pregunta del tipo de las WH questions, right? But, you want to make just a simple yes, no question, then you only have to say will plus subject. Like, will you go to the party? Or will you play video games tonight, for example? And then the answer is going to be yes, I will. Or no, I won't. Vamos a ver aquí. Eh, tendría que ser así, ¿verdad? Ya si queremos hacer una WH question, that, that, uy, vamos a ver. Voy por acá, guys. Give me a second. There we go. Ahí está. Vale, entonces, esta sería la oración simple. Ya si queremos hacer una oración del tipo a WH question, guys, we just need to add the WH word. And then, We say the same thing, like, when will you um, stop smoking, for example? Okay, vamos a por acá, dice Stephanie, you will not run in the morning. Will you run in the morning? Very good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. That is correct. Okay, awesome, guys. So basically, this is the structure, guys. Really easy. Just wanted to show you that first. Esta es la estructura básica, okay? Pero nosotros por acá ya teníamos otras cositas agregadas, verdad? So in this case, as you can see, we have just an expression that goes before. So I guess I'll just stay at home, okay? So I will stay home. I will watch a few DVDs, okay? I will go camping. Okay, le podemos agregar también esta otra forma. Vamos, vamos a ver por acá. Aquí nos lo explican. Vamos a escuchar. If you're thinking about what we're going to learn in this. So quickly before we talk about this particular chart, what I would like to do is just present the structure on how to form sentences with be going to so the examples on the left um, and so right then I'm going to use the exp to express those ideas what I want to do is I want to have some sort of possibility if you will all right and so what do I mean by that well the expressions such as I guess all right the expression maybe uh, the expression I think the expression I probably okay um, and so that's what I want you to notice here, right? So, well, I'm going to stay home for the weekend, I guess. And then this is going to follow a subject. I will watch the football game, all right? And so I could do the same thing for the rest of the possibilities that I mentioned. These are just words that will guide me towards expressing that this is not something that I've decided on. Maybe I'll watch the football game. Uh, I think I'll watch the football game. I probably will watch the football game. 
Now, um, with this last one here, I would like for you to pay attention to that one. Um, this is not going to follow the subject, okay? Uh, it will just continue to follow. I probably will watch the football game. But for the rest, you will need that subject there in the middle, okay? I guess I'll watch the football game. Maybe I'll watch the football game. I think I'll watch the football game. But however, with this one, you don't want to use uh, a subject there in the middle. I probably will watch the football game. The last thing that I would like for you to do is to think about your next vacation and make a plan of where you want to go and then within that plan think of all the possibilities and of course use this topic that we're covering today in class. So you may use these questions to help you with this exercise. How are you going to spend your next vacation? Where are you going to go? When are you going to take your next vacation? How long are you going to be on vacation? Now, if you look at, let's say, the second question, where are you going to go? You might have decided to take your vacation and you might know exactly where to go. And then, again, you might not. So if you're sure about it, then you're going to use the expressions towards the left. You're going to use be going to plus, um, you know, whatever complement that exists. So you're going to use, I'm going to go to Europe. All right, that could be um, your plan. But if you don't know, you haven't decided on, I'm not sure of where I'm going to go. I guess I'll travel, but I don't know where. And so you'll use the expressions towards the right side of this chart. I'm going to go to... Ok, guys. Bueno, eh, entonces acá... Europe. Lo voy a hacer un poquito para the atrás. expression I that this is acá not subject tenemos... there. Aquí está. Bueno, acá tenemos las expresiones que les estaba mencionando antes, ok? Tenemos I guess, maybe, I think, and probably, okay? So, when it comes to these uh, three here, uh, the first three options that we have here, like I guess, maybe, I think, uh, basically they have the same structure. So it's like, I guess, I will, and then the verb, then the complement, okay? Or maybe, I will, the verb, and then the complement. So the only one that is different is this the one at the bottom, okay? So this one is, I probably will watch the football game. So as you can see here, we don't have I, or the subject is not here before will, okay? So it's just like, I probably will watch the football game. So that's the difference. That's the only difference, really. Entonces, eh, estas tres, lo mismo, guys, es, I guess, I, y luego va will, el verbo y el complemento, okay? Maybe, sujeto, el verbo will, verbo eh, base y el complemento. Y también para esta. Y esta ya cambia, ¿ok? I probably will. Okay, aquí ya no tenemos el sujeto antes de will. Entonces sería, I probably will watch the football game. Or you can also make a negative sentence. You can say like, I probably won't watch the football game. Okay, I probably won't. Or I guess I won't watch the football game. That's another option too. So it depends on what you're trying to say. Vamos a ver, eh, nos queda claro acá lo que estamos intentando decir con estas expresiones. ¿Alguna pregunta, guys? Hasta ahora. No questions yet, okay? No questions. All right, guys. So Oh, I think that we can try to practice a little bit. So what I would like for you to do is that I would like for you to tell me as many sentences that you can, okay? So for example, uh, you can say, I guess, uh, let's, let's try to think about something that we think that we may do in the future. Like for example, let's say, I think I will stay home or maybe I will stay home on Sunday. For example, okay, basically we're trying to say that we are not really sure if that is going to happen or not. So we need to say something like that, okay? So maybe you can practice and you can participate. You can talk about something that you think that you probably will do in the future, okay? Vamos a ver. Vamos a intentar 
tomar estas eh, expresiones y vamos a intentar dar ejemplos. ¿okay? Quiero que ustedes me digan eh, ejemplos acerca de esto. Yo los voy a ir anotando. Por ejemplo, como les estaba mencionando, eh, o como está aquí, por ejemplo, vamos a decir, I guess I will watch the Champions League game, ¿ok? Ya mañana empiezan, guys. No sé si les gusta, pero... Game tomorrow. I'm not really sure because I, I think maybe some, something can happen and I have to work. So I, I don't know if I will be able to do that. But I'm just trying to say that, I guess, or I can say maybe I will watch the Champions League game tomorrow, okay, for example. So then uh, you can tell me whatever you want to, guys. It can be re really anything. Let's say that uh, I think I will take my children to school tomorrow, okay? Let's say that this is something that I haven't decided before. This is something that I decided just now, for example. And I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to do it. Maybe I won't have the time to do it. Maybe I'm busy, for example. Vamos a ver. Quiero que me digan ustedes ejemplos, guys, por favor. ¿Qué más se les ocurre? Simplemente intentemos eh, utilizar estas estructuras que están acá. Puede ser cualquier cosa. Vamos a ver, Freddy. Um, maybe I will have time to sleep a lot on my next day off. My next day off. Day off. Day off, okay. Very good. Is it okay to say on my next, uh, the expression on? Is it okay or we can say in? No, actually in this case, I think that the best option is to say on because you're talking about a day, like- A on. day, right? Right, so that's, that's the better option too. Yeah, okay. thank you, Fred. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So maybe I will have time to sleep a lot on my next day off from work, for example. Yeah, I'm going to say. I, Para ser más think, I guess, teacher, mm -hmm. I guess it will rain this weekend. Okay, awesome. I guess it will, it will rain, rain this weekend. This weekend. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Hilbert. Awesome. Thank you. So basically, we are saying that I, you know, we guess that is going to happen, maybe because um, cloudy. Sorry, guys. Okay, so we can make a prediction about that, but we are not like 100% sure that that is going to happen. Okay, we guess that that is something that is going to happen, but we are not really sure. Okay, so I guess it will rain this weekend. Very good. Very good. Muy buen trabajo, Hilbert. Entonces, eh, supongo que lloverá el fin de semana. No estoy seguro, pero puede ser así. Vamos a ver algo más por ahí. What about probably? How would you say something using probably, for example? Probably, right, probably. A ver, ¿qué piensan, guys? ¿Alguna otra opción que tengamos por ahí? Teacher, y ¿será que cae ahí? Um, I probably, uh -huh. I will go out to eat um, this weekend. Uh -huh. 
Okay, very good. No, yes. No. <laughs> yeah, thank you so Probably much, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> Ojalá que sí, ¿verdad? Dios quiera. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, entonces dice Carmen, I, will, I probably... Ok, aquí solamente recordemos, ¿verdad? Es lo que les estaba uh -huh. diciendo. Acá nosotros no le vamos a poner I. Creo que sería I probably will ah, okay. go out. Uh -huh. okay. ¿Cómo sería entonces, Carmen? Uh, I probably will go out to eat this weekend. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much, Carmen. Okay, entonces ahí tenemos un ejemplo. I probably will go out to eat this weekend. Okay, very good. Okay, perfecto. Entonces acá puede ser otro sujeto también, pero estamos más que todo enfocándonos en nosotros mismos, ¿ok? Como I think, I guess, I probably, but it can be something different, guys. It can be like, uh, she probably will go out to eat this weekend. You can say something like that. That would be fine too. So we have different options. So we can do this. Vamos a ver, ¿qué más? ¿Qué otro ejemplo podemos dar? Ya utilizamos maybe, I guess, probably, I think. So we already uh, talk about all these different options that we have. Veamos. Bueno, entonces vamos a... No sé si alguien más tiene algún otro ejemplo. A ver. Teacher. Dígame. I probably won't go to work on Saturday. Won't go to work on Saturday, you say. Very good. That's a, a really good example too. So I probably won't go to work on Saturday. Excellent. Thank you, Hilbert. Ok, muy buen ejemplo también. Eh, como les dije, podía ser negativo también, ok. Entonces, probablemente no iré a trabajar el día sábado. Ok, muy bien todo. Perfecto. Ok, vamos a ver. No sé si tenemos alguna pregunta más, guys, acerca de esta parte. Esta parte está bastante sencilla, ¿verdad? Ya nos ha quedado claro que por lo general vamos a utilizar will cuando sea algo, digamos, no tan seguro o algo que decidimos en el momento de que hablamos. A diferencia de, por ejemplo, be going to. Be going to es lo opuesto. Be going to es cuando eh, lo utilizamos mayormente cuando hablamos acerca de algo que ya hemos planeado. Esa es como la diferencia. Y creo que eso lo vamos a ver el día de mañana. Okay. Bueno, por acá al final del video también este, teníamos otra como propuesta acerca de, para practicar, acerca del futuro. ¿ok? Teníamos, por ejemplo, eh, ¿a dónde vas a ir para tu próxima vacación? ¿ok? So, ¿O qué es lo que vas a hacer? What are you doing for your next vacation? Aquí vamos a poner, ¿sí? Ok, luego ustedes pudieran contestar con estas expresiones, ok. Digamos que ustedes no lo tienen planeado. So, you have different options, guys. You can say like, I probably will go to Guatemala, ok. A lot of people go to Guatemala in, in vacation, guys. I haven't been to Guatemala in my life, but I think that a lot of people go to Guatemala because it's, it's a nice place. It's not really expensive. So, people like it because of that. ¿Qué más pudiéramos decir? Vamos a ver si nos preguntan ¿Qué es lo que vas a hacer para tu siguiente vacación? Si se fijan acá, no es de yes, no, ¿verdad? No es como que yes, I will, or no, I will not. Aquí tenemos que dar información. ¿Qué más pudiéramos decir, guys? Ok, 
¿Qué dirían ustedes? Vamos a ver qué planes tienen ustedes para su próxima vacación. Podría ser, teacher, I probably will go to the beach. Will go to the beach, ok. Very good. That would be an, a good option. I mean, people like to go to the beach, so you can say that. I probably will go to the beach. Thank you, Carmen. Ok, ahí tenemos una opción, ¿verdad? Remember, guys, will go to the beach, ok. Or you can say, I, I guess I will stay at home, ok. Will stay home, for example. Como Hilbert, podemos decir eso. Bueno, entonces, eh, algún ejemplo más, guys. Si no, pues quizás hasta aquí lo vamos a dejar por ahora. Eh, creo que esta es la parte que quería cubrir con ustedes por ahorita de, de Will. Está bastante sencillo, la verdad. Que mañana vamos a ver la otra parte que es de Be Going To. Y este, bueno, una vez que veamos Be Going To, también vamos a practicar. Ok, quiero que hagamos eso. Es muy importante para mí que practiquemos. Así que creo que el día de mañana sí les voy a dar un rato para que practiquen ustedes. Solamente ahora les quería como explicar esta parte por si tenían alguna duda o algo por el estilo. Mañana vamos a practicar y pues vamos a ver si hacemos algún juego o algo para que sea más eh, dinámico, ¿verdad? No quiero que se, que se aburran tanto, así que para mañana pues vamos a ver si hacemos algo ahí extra, ¿ok? Para que podamos practicar. Bueno, guys, ¿tienen alguna pregunta? ¿Algo más antes de que nos marchemos por el día de hoy? No questions. No question for today. Well, guys, uh, thank you so much for coming. And I will see you tomorrow. I hope you guys have a great evening. Bye bye, guys. Bye. Bye, bye guys.